Most recently, the associate head coach, now the head coach in his second year, took the Wildcats to the title game a year ago as the sixth seed, trying to rekindle some of that magic here this year as well. Underway here in WAC Vegas, Abilene Christian with the ball in the purple. California Baptist on defense in the white. Post touch for Joe Pleasant. He misses, and it's cleared by Blondo Chiquinho. Yeah, that was solid defense for the Lancers to start off on the first possession. First career start for Scotty Washington, number 12 in white. Handed off to Taryn Armstrong. Defended by Tobias Cameron. Armstrong, the top scorer for CBU, averaging 11 points per game. A three for Washington is way off. And it's picked up by Pleasant who averages five rebounds per game for ACU. Here's Tobias Cameron defended by Chiquinho. Mismatch here inside outside for Arion Simmons and his three swirls away. Chiquinho snares his second board. Yeah, they left him open and you know, this is the thing you do a scout and you do a lot of it, do it on percentages and they definitely let him wide open for that three. Lancers shoot a lot of threes. Here is Ree Nottage, and that pops through. Hey, he, that rim has been <laughs> really soft the last couple days. A lot of teams have knocked down threes that have rolled around, and there is another one there for Reed Nottage. That is the 181st career made three for Reed Nottage, his team best 60th make this year. Cameron spinning on Armstrong. Good finish by Tobias Cameron who's playing his best basketball right now for ACU. Yeah, nice kiss off the glass and just played almost like a post player and posted up the, the guard, Armstrong. Cameron was a big part of that run to the championship game a year ago for ACU. They fell just short against New Mexico State in that game. Riley Batten, the transfer from Utah, muscles it in for two. Yeah, that was nice, nice work backing down his player. And, Use that glass to his advantage. That was a big off-season addition for head coach Rick Croy. Batten in from Utah. He's a starter for the Utes. Speaking of starters, our starters are brought to you by Abilene Regional Airport. Book your next flight today at iFlyABI.com. Daniels, Cameron, Deba, Simmons, and Pleasant for ACU. As Deba's three misses. Meanwhile, California Baptist is giving... Scotty Washington, his first career start today. So that's a big storyline for CBU. Here's Riley Batten again. Kicks it outside for Choquenio. Crosses over, good move on Daniels. Cleared on the back side by Arion Simmons. You know, early in this game, these teams are filling each other out. Earlier in the year, they've only faced each other once. That's a nice back door. Diva misses, tapped out to Taryn Armstrong, and he'll push. Yeah, the Abilene Christian beat CBU in the one time they played in February 4th, 87-71. So we'll see what happens today. These are the starters for the 16 and 15 Lancers. Batten, the transfer from Utah. Taryn Armstrong, the top scorer. And then Choquenio, Reed Nottage, and Scotty Washington. Trey Armstrong, a three-year starter coming off the bench. Stolen by Washington in transition. He'll work on Deba, the spin move and the finish for Scotty Washington, making his first career start today. Well, that's a good start for him off the steal. Actually took on two players and said, you're not gonna stop me. He's electric as a freshman and can score. He can really score in bunches. High post, Deba popping his camera and contested three. Shorts, handled by Nottage. Good start for the Lancers, who struggled in the only regular season matchup with Abilene Christian. That foul is offensive on Taryn Armstrong. It was a 16-point ACU win in the lone regular season matchup. Seven to two Lancers, four plus in. Game one on day two from WAC Vegas. that he has to have this game. He's just got to play competitive. On the other hand, head coach Brett Tanner for Abilene Christian says, we have to play unbelievable defense today. He said, we got to play ACU brand of basketball. We've been inconsistent all year. It's win or go home. Now's the time. Adam. 
Thank you, Kendra. Yeah, Jill, going back to that point that Kendra was talking about regarding Rick Croy and Taryn Armstrong, there is so much pressure on Armstrong to do so many things well for CBU. And we have to recall as well, he's only a sophomore. He's still very young, but there's a lot of pressure on him to do well for CBU to have success. Oh, definitely. He is an elite passer and a really good player, but that's a lot to carry on your shoulders. Here's Armstrong, last year's WAC Freshman of the Year. A very crafty ball handler, a very good passer, the top passer in the WAC. Hunter Goodrick is in off the bench. Goodrick backing down Pleasant, back out for Nottage. Missed that one wider right, and Pleasant collects once again. And that's solid defense there by the Wildcats. Back door, Daniels on the catch. And the five foot seven, 140 pound point guard puts it in for two. <laughs> well, he may be shorter on the short end and uh, doesn't weigh a lot, but he can play. Those keys to the game are presented by Geico, saving you money on your car insurance for over 85 years. What do you have here, Joe? Well, definitely Abilene Christian needs to defend the three point shot from the Lancers and I think more than anything play with confidence and for CBU they need to limit second chance points here by the Wildcats and definitely take care of the ball versus their pressure and that was a nice finish there by the Wildcats. That was Hunter Jack Madden off Brett Tanner's bench a junior from Sydney Australia. There's a lot of Australians on the CBU roster and ACU giving CBU a taste of their own medicine there with Madden's deuce. Great defense by the Wildcats. The fans appreciate it. Washington, a tough floater. Simmons did it all. Yeah, that was great defense and forced a bad shot. You know, that's the thing. Defense creates pressure and good defense. And that's the thing that the Lancers have to do is take care of the ball versus this Wildcat pressure. You can tell the ACU fans really appreciate the defense. It's been a tough year for the Wildcats. A lot of really good talent back from a year ago and also adding Joe Pleasant. Simmons was out of bounds right in front of the official Larry Spaulding who was all over it. Really good officiating crew here today. Larry Spaulding, Mark Beasley, Kelly Pfeiffer as Taryn Armstrong goes off and his head coach Rick Croy will do some coaching up. Let's see how the Lancers respond with Armstrong on the bench. His older brother Trey is now in. Rick Croy's in his 10th year on the Lancers bench. Has that Australian pipeline, the former assistant coach at St. Mary's under longtime head coach Randy Bennett. And the foul is called yeah. away from the ball. Yeah, foul away from ball and you know, running out of bounds plays, you can't run through a screen. So aren't Emmanuel Allen, the top scorer this year for ACU, only averages 11 points per game. He comes off the bench. Yeah, that definitely yeah. was a, a block there. Good Rick working on Cameron back outside for Trey Armstrong. Shot put floater hits the side of the backboard. Flies it in the corner for Nottage, too strong. As you can see right now, CBU wants to hit the threes. They just have to take better care of uh, taking a good shot. That's uncontested. Pleasant misfires, and here comes Choquenio. Sometimes making that extra pass to make a good shot and get a great shot instead. A lot of contact down low. Allen just picked up his second. That was a tough pass by Chiquano, Chiquano, excuse me. And they're fortunate to get a, a foul and the ball back here to the Lancers. Lancers haven't scored in three and a half minutes as Cameron Steele checks in for ACU. He was really good in our conference play. Hasn't played as much in league games though. Chiquano blows by the defender and works his way to the free throw line for two now. He's a transfer from New Hampshire. Played three years there, led the America East in helpers per game a year ago. Yeah, he's a solid player and actually a great contributor 
Only 6'2", but he is rugged and strong. Londo Chiquinho, 73% free throw shooter. That snaps the scoreless drought of 346 for CBU after leading 7-2 out of the gates. Nottage goes off, and Joe Quintana comes in, and that's big for CBU because we were unsure if Quintana would play today with an injury. He missed the final two regular season games, and he could be a big lift shooting-wise off Rick Croy's bench. Steal to Pleasant. Trying to hand it off to Cameron, and Pleasant was dragging his pivot foot, traveling on Joe Pleasant. Good defense there by the Lancers, forcing that turnover. Mentioned the Wildcats have a good chunk of guys back from their run to the title game a year ago, and then Joe Pleasant, his second go around now, and Abilene Christian was part of their NCAA tournament winning team two years ago in the Southland Conference. Outside for Batten, he'll fire a three, spins it off. Those threes aren't dropping right now, Joan, for CBU. No, and it's contagious. I always feel like hitting threes and assists are contagious throughout the team, but basketball's a game of runs, and so we'll see if the Lancers can put together a run. Three-point misses was a big reason why the Lancers were blown out in the first matchup. And now it's Cameron who drags his pivot foot. CBU is six for 25 from three in the first matchup. They are one for five so far early on. Deadlocked at eight here at Michelob Ultra Arena. This is because when you have that experience and the players have it, and he has a few players still on the roster who were part of that, I mean, that is very special. And boy, that's a good carrot out there to continue to build and try to get back to the NCAAs. Damian Daniels and Joe Pleasant in particular, two big parts of that tournament run a couple of years ago. A deep three for Trey Armstrong, and Rick Roy would love for him to heat up. That is Trey Armstrong's 46th made three this year. Well, they needed that to open things up, and when you start making threes, it opens up the middle too. Second effort, Tobias Cameron. He did that the entire tournament a year ago. Just very strong and very finesse around the rim. Oh, he's a great rebounder, he's a tough player. And so they're doing a great job on the offensive glass. Extra pass, Trey Armstrong again. He has hit on the three and one for Armstrong. Yeah, to make a, be able to make a very hard four-point play. Well, you know, so the thing is, you don't want to foul the jump shooter, but obviously they did. They did. He was almost out at the strip hitting that three-point shot. He was well beyond the three-point line. Let's take a look here. Beautiful extra pass. Yeah, he's about six foot back. Mm. And so he deserves four points if he can get it for that kind of shot. Joan, he's an X factor because he's been here before. He's typically a starter in previous years, off the bench right now for CBU. But this is a young man who's coming off the bench and he entered today 31 points shy of 1,000 career points. He's played a lot of collegiate basketball the previous couple of years. Well, he's on his way to get that 1,000 and getting some four point plays will definitely help. A quick seven for Trey Armstrong. Cameron banks it in, four in a row for him. Well, they're doing something unusual, and, and I like this. When you have a big, strong guard, sometimes you want to invert your offense and post up your guards, and right now that's what ACU is doing, and doing it successfully. Darren Armstrong will sweep it through and attack. Outside for Quintana, sneaks around the defender. Floater no good, put back no good, but Joe Quintana will shoot two free throws. Well, that's what you're taught to do, to follow your shot. He oh, knew he had the miss on that floater, and good job following his shot, and now at the free throw line. Joe Quintana missed the final two regular season games with an injury. He was questionable going into this tournament. He is playing here in round one. This is a young man, Joan, who, when he was at Loyola Marymount a year ago, scored 31 in a West Coast Conference tourney game over at the Orleans Arena. Made eight threes in the game. 
Well, I think he wanted to come back to Las Vegas in a different color uniform, but he's good. He is really good. He wants to get back to the Orleans Arena where he shot it so well a year <laughs> ago. And if he gets the win today, he will get back there. Hot hand right now for the Wildcats is with number 11 in purple, Tobias Cameron. Let's see, look at they're posting him up again. But this time, this time they're trying to double team. The Lancers try to double team and called for a foul there. It, Tobias Cameron's tough and he has no hesitation. A lot of guards don't like the physicality underneath, but he doesn't mind it at all. Well, again, this one is gonna go on Taryn Armstrong. The previous foul was the first on Reed Nottage. That's two on Taryn Armstrong. That's very, very important early on in this game. Well, really, it is important, and you gotta credit ACU because right now, Two fouls already trying to get the ball in. This is a physical game and officials right now are allowing them to play. Cameron will swing it for Deba, the transfer from Chicago State. Played in the whack for the Cougars a year ago. Step back three is way short, Jay Sean Jackson. Good defensive stand for CBU after a couple initial fouls. Yeah, that was a tough shot. You know, you can get that. I mean, I don't want to be too critical, but you can get that shot anytime yep. you want. And so you just got to be a little bit more patient, get better ball movement. Riley Batten turns the corner, and then he shuffles his feet. A good call there by the official. He didn't, Riley didn't see that, but everyone else did. So, you know, you don't want to have unforced turnovers, and that's one of them, but, you know, let's play on. Wildcats 0 for 5 from 3. That's the difference right now. The Lancers, meanwhile, have made three threes, two of them off the bench from Trey Armstrong. Deep two for Joe Pleasant. Saved by Choqueno to Trey Armstrong. Good hustle there by the Lancers because they've allowed a number of second shots right now. Actually, uh, a few off the bench. Trey Armstrong will fire and he hits another, the oh, third made triple. He is feeling it right now. And when you're scoring threes, I mean, you can pull away right now. Lancer is with an eight point lead. He's feeling it. Nice drive there by Jay Sean Jackson. Well, right now it's Deba defending Trey Armstrong and he does not need much room right now. Just a small crease to get it off. Trey Armstrong in the right corner. Nottage fumbled, got it back. Chocuano now. Trey Armstrong on the right sideline, away from the ball. Long two for Batten, and he swishes it through. He has really good range, Joan, for a post player. Uh, he's a really good range. He's a really good player. He's rugged, can go inside, outside. And a lot of post players don't like to face up, and he does, and does a good job. And now he intercepts. Lancers will push. Trey Armstrong for Nottage in transition. And it's a blocking foul called on Cameron. He can't believe it. Yeah, those are tough calls, the block charge call. Well, Mark Beasley was all on it. Brett Tanner disagrees. First foul on Cameron, number six on ACU. Lancers behind a strong. He said, quite frankly, I miss the brotherhood, the culture that Abilene Christian had to offer. He said it's really cool this year. He gets to play with a mix of old players and new players. Players like Ariane Simmons, players like Emmanuel Allen and Tobias Cameron, who are his current roommates. But he said the coolest part is getting a chance to finish this journey with Damian Daniels. The two were in the same recruiting class, and so it's awesome. We started this together, and now we end it. Adam. Thank you, Kendra. Yeah, cool story. Those two guys grew up playing with each other in the Kansas City area, now finishing their careers together as well. Straight off the bench, Leonardo Bettiol, the redshirt freshman from Italy, stuffs it in for two, Joe. Hey, anyone from Italy I, I like. You're all in, right? I'm all in, and he, that was a really nice move. When you can get production from your bench, it is awesome. Malik Wade is in off Rick Roy's bench for CBU. 
The eight seed Lancers and Wade puts it in for two. A lot of contact down low and Cameron good sportsmanship trying to help up Wade. Yeah, that, a lot of physical play, but that was a great extra pass. Lancers here are being very unselfish and sharing the basketball. A very physical first half so far. Down low for Betty All, right-handed hook. Tipped up by Madden, then he grabs it, pulls it out to the arc. Daniels to blow by, falls down, throws up a shot. On the doorstep is Cameron. He missed it up close. And then it's pulled in by Choqueno. Bodies flying everywhere again. These guys are playing hard. Scotty Washington too strong on his three. High rebound cleared by Debo. No nice look pass. pass down low by Daniels and he hooks up with Betty All. And Rick Croy will burn a timeout here. Yeah, that was really nice right there. But there you go. Came up and said, okay, let me knock this free throw down. Armstrong, a junior out of Tasmania, one of nine international players on Rick Croy's roster. That's been the theme the previous 10 years for Rick Croy. He has done a really good job of recruiting internationally. And Trey Armstrong, Reed Nottage, two guys that have been around for a while now, a big part of that. Well, they do a great job. You know, basketball's an international game and a lot of good talent. You can see it at every single level, men, women, internet, and pros. It's great. And right now, CBU is going to be fortunate at any foul from here on out. From ACU, they're at the free throw line. Back end of two for Choqueno. Pinball's off, and Cameron is right there for ACU. Wildcats Jones still have not made a three. They averaged seven made threes per game. They were three for 15 from three in their regular season finale. Madden passes up the three. Daniels will launch. There's the first made three for Abilene Christian. Daniels was two for 11 from three in his previous four games. Well, I think he heard you here because they needed a three just to open up the, the defense so they can pass it underneath a little bit more. Emmanuel Allen defends here. He has two personals. Goodrick is fouled, likely from Cameron by behind. And if it's on Cameron, that is his second personal. Yeah, they had three people down on Hunter Goodrick. And uh, unfortunately, it was a swing, and it's an easy call for the official. Yeah, it will be on Tobias Cameron. So two on him, two on Allen. Also two on Simmons for ACU. Let's see what Brett Tanner does here. So Cameron's going to come off, and Joe Pleasant will re-enter. Hunter Goodrick, unfortunately, is only a 56% free throw shooter. We'll see if he can get the second one. Goodrick out of Sydney, Australia. Splits the pair. Transfer from South Dakota. Daniels out of the backcourt for ACU. Blazing speed for the 5'7", 140-pound point guard. Slow start for Allen, the top scorer this year for ACU. And out of the double team, Trey Armstrong intercepts. Lancer is trying to push in transition. Taryn Armstrong on the bench with two fouls, but CBU's been okay without him. That's offensive away from the ball, and a legal screen is called on Chiquenio. You know, the officials have allowed so much to happen, and so thing as players and as coaches, you have to adjust to the way the game is called. Now, I've always felt that uh, as long as the game is called consistently, the players just adjust and you got to figure it out. Right back to Damian Daniels. Blows by the defender. Good body control by the five foot seven, Damian Daniels. Yeah, he's only five seven, but great body control and got up there. You know, you can't teach quickness. His first step is incredible. Choquenio runs over the defender. That's a charge. Drawn by Hunter Jack Madden for ACU. Excellent defense there by the Lancers. And taken one for the team.
Defensively this year, Abilene Christian Jones has given up 71 points per game, 77 in league play. They're still forcing turnovers, but this is a program that prides itself on defense, and they're almost giving up 80 points per game in league play. That's too much. No, that is too much, but if they can play defense like they just showed, they're going to have a, a good game here. Offensive rebound for Allen. We get a jump ball, and possession goes to CBU. Good hustle. I think right now the Lancers got to continue to do a good job not allowing second shots for Abilene Christian. The Lancers have led by as many. One, you know, Rick Croy and his staff have put together a terrific program. Obviously, great support. They're third in attendance in men's programs in Southern California. Yep. So they have the support. They'd love to go on a ride here to the NCAA tournament. And Rick Roy brings Taryn Armstrong back in. He hooks up with his brother Trey, who cans another three. And for the second time in half one, he has a chance at a four-point play. Holy cow, to get two four-point plays in one game is incredible. Okay, so if you're on Abilene Christian defense, do not foul the jump shooter. I know they... Lancer shoot a lot of threes, but this guy is hot. My goodness. Trey Armstrong, four for four from distance, 13 points. Trying to go two for two on free throws. He cannot miss. Holy cow, okay. And, and I was just about to ask you too, Joan, <laughs> if you agree with the decision to bring Taryn back in the game with two personals at this juncture here in half one. Well, you know, you know, I always deflect to the coaches. They've seen these guys in practice every day. They know what they do. Yeah, don't, yeah, they're giving up second shots. That's the biggest thing, I think, for the Lancers. They have to do a better job, but Rick Corey knows his, his players. You know, you gotta be careful here. Because if I'm a uh, coach uh, for the Wildcats, I'm going right at Taryn Armstrong. Taryn Armstrong hasn't scored yet, but his older brother is picking up the slack offensively, batting to fall away. Another good mid-range jumper for the transfer from Utah. Nice shot, he's a good player. He's rugged, he can face up. He's a player. Now, Rick Roy's hand might have been forced because Chiquenio picked up his third personal, so he's the backup point guard, which means Taryn Armstrong had to come back in as Armstrong clears the miss and pushes in transition for CBU. Yeah, he knows his players. Rick Roy, I mean, you, get, you see these guys in, every day in practice, and so, and he knows his, uh, his mentality, you know, he knows to be careful. He's such a good passer, though. And so I would say, go to the hot hand. How about going to your brother? Goodrick lost it, and it was off his leg. Not touched by Damian Daniels. Turnover is CBU, and that is their fifth. They have made five of their previous seven from the field. Trey Armstrong has been a huge part of this offense here in the first half. And coming off the bench doing it. He's halfway to his career high, which is 28. Missed by Simmons and Taryn Armstrong, who rebounds really well for a point guard. Skies high to grab it again. Here's Trey Armstrong to the rim. The finger roll. 16 for Trey Armstrong. And Brett Tanner is furious with the defense. Yeah, direct drive. And he showed his quickness there, too. What an ex help. Mm -hmm. You got to get help from your teammates. And that's probably where Brett Tanner was upset, is there wasn't help on the help side against... Trey Armstrong, Deba, acrobatic Ooh. finger roll, good finish by the Sweden native, a transfer from Chicago State. Well, they said he gets to the rim, and he definitely did, and he put that high off the glass. Zero points for Taryn Armstrong, mismatch there, and Daniels is whistled for his first personal. And that will put Taryn at the line for his first points, potentially, and he's getting two. From now on, they're in the bonus the rest of the half. And he did right there what you need to do. If Damian Daniels is guarding Taryn Armstrong, Armstrong 6'6", six, six, Daniels 5'7", you try to back him down and post him up, right? Absolutely. That's a smart guard using your height. Taryn Armstrong, a sophomore from Tasmania, the youngest of the two Armstrong brothers. Last year's WAC freshman of the year. Second team all league this year. 
was the number two prospect out of Australia during his prep days. And he misses both. Which is unusual, but you know, he's got to get back in the flow here. But the other Armstrong Bruggers doing pretty yeah. good. Yeah, he's scoring enough for the both of them, that's for sure. Deba, floater short. Offensive rebound, Betty All. He was sandwiched in between two defenders, and he will shoot one and one. Oh. Leonardo Betty All, 62%, a redshirt freshman, 6'8, 214 pounds. Only averages four points per game, but he got four quickly off the bench earlier. Rims in the free throw. Abilene Christian coming off four straight 20 win campaigns. Two NCAA tournament trips in the previous three years. Of course, previously in the Southland Conference. Last year was their first year in the WAC. They've lost five in a row after three straight wins, and Betty All misses it all. These are two teams, Joan, that weren't playing very well down the stretch. Lancers lost three of their final four in the regular season, so we were intrigued by this matchup because you were trying to figure out which team was going to start trending upwards here. You, you know, when there's a lot of pressure here, you know, you lose, you go home, you win, you move on, and, you know, you don't know. And right now, I don't think either of these teams, unless they win out, well, there's a nice pass. Mm. And nice shot there by Taryn Armstrong and the give and go. But a lot of pressure, I mean, because if these teams were to lose, they're not going to any postseason play at all. They work so hard, so there's a lot on the line. Lancers ahead by eight. Betty all again. What a lift off the bench for head coach Brett Tanner. He has a team high seven. Played really well. And they're double teaming down anytime, a, anytime anyone is on the block here for the Wildcats, the Lancers are double teaming, so he did a great job. 20 seconds left here in half one. 36-30 Lancers with possession. Taron Armstrong with the ball. He just scored his first points of the game. Good high hedge by Pleasant. Good Rick with two to shoot. Maneuvers, misses, Deba collects. Let's see if Allen gets it off. He does, and it's a brick. Taron Armstrong wanted a double dribble. He didn't get it, but Allen missed anyway. Allen only two points in that first half. The top scorer this year for Abilene Christian. Finley matched, and we saw that in the first 20. We'll see that potentially here in half two as well. Damian Daniels down low for Joe Pleasant. Right back to Pleasant from Daniels. Daniels, a catch and shoot three, spins away, and Washington clears for CBU. I still like that shot. I like the in and out and unselfishness, just didn't or wasn't able to knock down that three. Taryn Armstrong, a dump off, the spin move and the finish for the Utah transfer, Riley Batten down low. Yeah, he finished that, but what a great pass by Taryn Armstrong. He is, has such good vision and unselfishness. Are you surprised Trey Armstrong is not starting half two? Well, I, I, you know, again, I always defer. That was a, a block, I believe. Maybe it was, no, it was a charge, excuse me. That was a charge, I thought he was set. Am I surprised? And again, I always defer to the coaches. They know their players. He's been coming off the bench yep. all year, but I think we'll see him here pretty quickly. Yeah, I guess if it worked in half one, don't change it up. Bring him off the bench again. So the Lancer is going with their starters in half two. Chiquenio's on the floor with three personals. Taryn Armstrong has two personals. Slings it out for Washington. He connects from three. What a pass by Taryn Armstrong. Uh, he has eyes on the side of his head. Oh my goodness. What a pass, a beautiful finish. And now we got 11 point lead here for the Lancers. The WAC leader and helpers. He has five assists right at his season average of five per game. Here's Cameron on the attack. Kick out. Deba's three is heavy. Rebound offensive for Daniels. Stays patient with it. Dump off to Deba. Missed it short. Popped loose and grabbed by Nottage. Good defense there by the Lancers.
Touch pass to Nottage. Spins off the three, Batten tips it around right to Daniels. I like Daniels, I mean, he's a small guy, but he has, he thinks he's 6'5", you know, but he's quick and he doesn't mind. Another charge here, this one by Taryn Armstrong. They're doing it both ends of the floor. It's I was called. talking about Damian Daniels, I like him, I like his heart. He's a part of the 2023 Wackall defensive team. Armstrong lost it, and we'll send it over to Kendra, who checked in with Brett Tanner out of the halftime break. Yeah, coming out of the break, head coach Brett Tanner said he liked the way we're attacking the paint. He said, that's our strong suit. We got to keep that up in the second half. However, defensively, he said, we have to stop the three. He said two of those threes were four-point plays. He said, if we want to win this second half, we can't give up more than three open looks from downtown. Adam. Thank you, Kendra. Yeah, now the lead is 11 for the Lancers with the ball. Washington spins off the three. The Wildcats fell asleep during that inbounds play, Joe. They did. They are fortunate that didn't go down. Unfortunately, Riley Batten called for over the back there. Well, ACU needs to get on the board here and get some points here in the second half. Recroy has to feel good about the current position for the Lancers, but... You cannot get complacent ahead by 11. This Wildcats offense can score in bunches. Madden will swing it for Joe Pleasant, who's been very quiet here today, scoreless. Post entry to Betty All. He had a good first half. Cameron with under 10 to shoot. A teardrop is good. He thought he was fouled as well. Yeah, I like Tobias Cameron. He's physical guard. Hadn't scored in a little bit, but smart. Very, very smart. Show he can shoot the three, but also score on the block. Rick Croy will call out the play, and Taryn Armstrong will reset. Malik Wade with the ball screen. Armstrong goes away from it. Kick out. Washington for three. Rebounded by Cameron. Taryn Armstrong would have had a layup. Passed it up for the three, and Madden is bumped. On the other end. Oh, wow, Riley Batten didn't see that coming. Great outlet pass here by the Land, I'm sorry, by the Wildcats. And now we're getting two free throws here for Hunter Jack Madden. Well, that goes to show Taryn Armstrong is pass first. He had a layup try, but he saw Washington open. So instead of trying the two, he tried the three. I thought he had an open lane yep. to the basket, but as you said, he gave it up. And here is Trey Armstrong. I knew he'd come in pretty early. It only took three minutes and 10 seconds. Washington <laughs> off and Trey Armstrong returns after 16 off the bench in the first half of play. Madden's free throw is good. Wildcats trying to chip away at this deficit. They will pick up the pressure a little bit and then drop back in the half court. Daniels only 5'7", defense the 6'6", Taryn Armstrong, and the high hedge is too aggressive for Betty All. Yeah, that was too hard a hedge. You want to show, but you don't want to knock the <laughs> offensive player around. So we call that like an ice play. You're showing help, and you need to recover. And he showed too much and didn't recover quick enough. Here comes Wade again for another ball screen. Taryn Armstrong going to work, poked away by Daniels, and then a foul is called on Pleasant going after the ball for ACU. Yeah, he was fortunate. Taryn Armstrong's fortunate they got that foul. The ball was tipped out of his hands. Damian Daniels is really pesky defensively. Oh my goodness, he's pesky, <laughs> he's tough. You know, I said he has a heart, he thinks he's 6'5", but boy, is he quick. Daniels, part of the WAC all-defensive team this year. He defends Taryn Armstrong again. Taryn will try to back him down. Daniels keeps his position outside for Nottage. 
Florida shoots. Nottage has to hurry. He attacks. His reverse layup is good with the left hand. Oh, wow. Boy, he made a great move at the hoop. Reed Nottage with a big basket. Nottage, not just a three-point shooter. Showing off his ability to dribble drive there. Betty All dumps it off to a cutting Cameron. Outside for Madden. His three way off. Offensive rebound, stick back try, no good for Betty All. Scooped up by Batten, cherry picking his nottage. Madden gets back and he intercepts. <laughs> like a free safety in football. <laughs> yeah, I like the idea, but you gotta make sure your guy is there. He put it up too high on that pass. Well, Betty All was out of control and now California yeah. Baptist will slow it down. Brett Tanner just got teed up. Yes, Brett Tanner just got teed up by Larry Spaulding. Uh, he got to be careful he doesn't get a second one here. His players are holding him back. Technical foul called on Allen Anderson, the university coach. Well, it was getting really chippy and really physical, and this will send us to the under 16 media. Brett Tanner teed up. We'll get technical free throws on the other side from WAC Vegas. Brett Tanner was just teed up before the timeout, and Trey Armstrong, who's been automatic everywhere on top of the Michelob Ultra Arena floor, he shoots the first technical free throw and makes it. He will get a second attempt as well, looking for his 18th points, and he missed it short. That's the only thing he's done wrong today is missed a free throw. He hasn't missed a three yet, four for four from behind the arc. Uh, tensions are boiling over, and Brett Tanner will see if this can kind of spark and spearhead his team after the tee. Chiquinho swings it for Riley Batten. Backing down on Joe Pleasant, spins to his left. And then he travels as he shuffled his feet. He did shuffle his feet. And so this is an important possession right now, I believe for Abilene Christian, you know, your coach just gets a technical. You see, how, and, and he's trying to, he's getting after the official, but he's really trying to get after his team a little bit and pump them up, so we'll see if they can respond. Sometimes it can propel your team, but here Abilene Christian turns it over, stolen by Malik Wade. Choquenio runs the point with Taryn Armstrong on the bench. Here's Trey Armstrong, Cameron all over him. Wade, back door, Chiquinho lays it in for two. Well, two things there, unbelievable pass, but what a great cut to the rim and an easy layup there. Foul is called well away from the basket. This one goes on Trey Armstrong, his second personal. That's the third team foul here for CBU in this half. Joe Katana comes in for Reed Nottage. Riley Batten goes off and Hunter Goodrick in for CBU. Tobias Cameron goes off for ACU. Wildcats historically very, very good in the postseason, especially a year ago when they made the run to the title game. They turn it over again. Second straight steal for Malik Wade and he's bumped by Betty All, 94 feet away from the hoop. Yeah, you know, you love the hustle, but you don't want to get those fouls that far away going the other way now. And that's the sixth team foul, so one more foul with just over four, 14 minutes left is a lot, and uh, CBU will be shooting free throws. Abilene Christian giving up 77 points per game this year in conference play, which is a huge number for this program. Typically really, really good on defense. Chiquinho, head of the key, going to work on Pleasant, a mismatch here. Dumps it off to Wade, foul line jumper. Back rim, no good, bounces over the backboard. And the ball goes back to Abilene Christian. You know, I like the unselfishness there, and you know, just missed the shot. And here comes a Reed Nottage again, coming in for Malik Wade for the Lancers. 
Meanwhile, Arion Simmons just came back in for Brett Tanner and Abilene Christian. Simmons hasn't scored today, Joan, and he's one of their key players offensively. Well, that hurts. That hurts when Simmons doesn't score, and he's one of the top players for Abilene Christian. you got to figure out how to get him involved, or someone else needs to step up. Shot no good for Simmons. So his struggles continue 0 for 4 from the field. Now he does have five helpers, so he is contributing, but no points. Chiquenio, a Euro, and a finish. Oh. Blondo Chiquenio. He was weaving in and out of that Las Vegas traffic and was able to knock it down. Low post for Pleasant, and he is held by Hunter Goodrick. Damian Daniels will trigger in for Abilene Christian. Trying to find a teammate, he finds Allen. Great defense by Trey Armstrong. Simmons on the catch. Positioning for Betty All. Stays patient, goes with the left. One-handed rebound snared in by Trey Armstrong. And a great rebound there by Trey Armstrong. I'm impressed. You know, the Lancers are known as a great shooting team, but I'm really impressed right now with their defense, too. So Quenio picked up his dribble. And a timeout is called, much needed, to keep this possession alive for CBU. This will turn into the media, 48-34 from the conference in the regular season. Justin Johnson, Cameron Tyson, Tevian Jones from Southern Utah. We're going to see Ray Harrison from Grand Canyon later on today, and then Cameron Gooden for Utah Tech, who plays tonight. Trey Armstrong not on the list. He only averages six points per game, but shown he has 17 today. Oh, he's been great off the bench, and a Real spark plug. And I'll tell you right now, the Wildcats need a spark. They haven't scored in over four and a half minutes. And while CBU is on a 7-0 run and looking good, they've taken good shots, been smart. Madden missed a three on the previous possession. And now the Wildcats are one for 11 from three. Taryn Armstrong throws up a floater. Goodrick, a one-handed rebound. He'll toss it up, no good. Cleared by Madden for ACU. A sprint down the floor. Cameron Steele, limited minutes today off the bench. Now Simmons, way short. Rebound collected by Choquenio, his fifth. Taryn Armstrong will push and then backpedal out to the arc. Bounces for Goodrick. Skip out, catch and shoot three, Quintana. Way short. Here comes Daniels, attacks on Armstrong and spins it home. Oh my goodness, he had some English on that shot and they sure needed that. No rebounders, but Armstrong will attack anyway and Taryn Armstrong is bumped going up. And now we'll take another media with 11.04 left. Taryn Armstrong has only scored two points. He does have five helpers. He will get two free throws on the other side. Well, the offense is cooled off for both. Lancers haven't scored in over two minutes. Here's a look at their previous outing, the regular season finale against a really good Southern Utah squad. Lancers fell by 10. It was their third loss in their previous four games. Riley Batten was really good with a career-high 19. Batten has scored eight today, and Taryn Armstrong gets one out of two. Meanwhile, the Wildcats have missed seven of their previous eight shots from the field. So neither offense clicking right now. Almost midway through half two, Joe. Well, you got to credit the defense from the Lancers also. But Wildcats need to get on the board here quickly and get back in this ball game. And I mean, it's obviously still in reach. Simmons <laughs> leans in and banks it in his first points. Oh, they needed a basket and Arion Simmons helped out a lot there. 
They needed him. He's, uh, he was actually a whack all conference a year ago. All conference and all tournament team a year ago as well. He averaged 15 points per game in the WAC tournament last season. A big part of that tournament run for ACU. Batten on the catch, looking for double figures. Sends it outside for Quintana. One to shoot for Trey Armstrong. He gets it off, he gets the rim. And Steele will grab it defensive. Now that was good defense by the Wildcats. Nothing came easy. And what do you know, Damian Daniels just Quickness is important, and quick timeout here by Rick Croy for the Lancers. Damian Daniels does not want this to be his final collegiate game. Senior out of Kansas City wants to play in his 106. These teams would love that opportunity to do that, and here's a little bit of a press. Lancers will reset with their point guard, Taryn Armstrong. It's been a pretty quiet half for Trey Armstrong. Not really involved so far in this half. Batten is down low and he's in double figures. Oh, CBU needed that because they were 0 for 5. Uh, and they needed some a step up and get some points on the board and push that lead again. Quiet afternoon for Allen. He airballs the three. He's only scored two points. He leads Abilene Christian in scoring this year, 11 per game. Well, score, I won't say scorers have that mentality they want to score they they need him or someone else to step up in his place but they need more points here starts on the defensive end damian daniels has a team high 11 for acu but he's not really a scorer joquenio is fouled you know you can pick a number of players for abilene christian who fouled joquenio arian simmons right now is face first down on the floor in a lot of pain Saw him grimacing earlier. I wonder if this is something that's kind of been lingering here for Simmons. He gets help up from his teammates. I'm glad he got up because he was down, mm -hmm. face down. Daniels will come in for Allen. It looks like Simmons is okay to stay in. He said he's okay. Just told his coach. They're taking him out, but he, yeah. he's a little slow walking back, but he's having a conversation with his coach. Yeah, initially Allen was gonna come out, but they make the decision to pull Simmons. Choquenio trying to make this a 13 point advantage for CBU, and he does so. Transfer from Division I, New Hampshire. Well, Joan, how does ACU get back in this? Well, you know what, uh, there's still a lot of time, but it's good ball movement. Uh, taking good shots, you know, and this is a good rebounding team. Attack the glass. Pleasant has it stripped, scooped up by Daniels. Back to Pleasant on the slip. Good jump stop and a finish for Joe Pleasant. Oh, that was a really nice move, and it's a timely move. So now how do they get back? His shots like that, but they need to do it at the defensive end and don't allow any open shots. Everything has to be contested. The legal screen is called on CBU. This goes on Trey Armstrong. On the previous possession, those were the first points of the game for Joe Pleasant, and he's a 1,000-point career scorer. So a lot of guys have not contributed that normally contribute offensively for Abilene Christian. And off to Madden. His three is wide left in the corner, tracked down by Choquenio. Tic-tac-toe up the floor. Nottage for Batten. They'll reset with Choquenio. Lancers do a great job of spreading the court, and that's why you see some open lanes, and they're able to penetrate and do a lot of kickouts. Locking foul on Cameron. He can't believe it. That's Cameron's third. He thought he drew a charge on Taryn Armstrong. Yeah, so did his coach. But now they're at the free throw line. It's still one and one. It's been a nightmare shooting game from three for Abilene Christian. One for 14. They trail by 11. 7.55 left. Half two from Michelob Ultra Arena. To be a part of for Taryn, he said that 
He's following in his father's footsteps. Benjamin was a point guard just like him, and he said he was able to learn a lot from watching his father's career over the years. He learned how to be a good teammate, competitiveness, and holding himself accountable. Adam. <laughs> Thank you, Kendra. And one for the Wildcats. Damian Daniels trying to put the team on his back here in the final seven plus. That Armstrong connection, Joan, it, it's a neat co connection too because Taryn Armstrong's the passer, he's the point guard, and Trey Armstrong's the shooter, so it works out pretty well, doesn't it? It works out really well. You can tell who was the passer and shooter, I'm sure, back home in that backyard. But Damian Daniels is trying to put this team on his back. Damian Daniels now with 14, the only Wildcat in double figures as they ramp up the pressure and Nottage will slide across the midcourt line. There's still a lot of time left in this game. Trey Armstrong, backdoor Nottage, back out Taryn Armstrong, extra pass for Choquenio, slithers, floats, and hits. Good well, ball movement. Great ball movement and excellent way he saw the defense and nice floater to finish for that too. Joquenio, who is playing with four personals, has played a really good floor game. Pleasant runs over Riley Batten. He lowered the shoulder, and that's a charge. Well, coach does not agree with that at all, but going the other way here for CBU, they're playing tough defense. Yeah, that's an easy call. It's been a really physical game, a little chippy at times. But really physical from the outset here in round one. Winner goes to the quarterfinals on Thursday against top seed Sam Houston. Daniels saved it on the sideline. Daniels goes in there, <laughs> man. He just sticks his nose in, Joan. He doesn't care. Yeah, I love the hustle by both teams. And it's staying here for the Lancers. Mm. You know, I would say that this is a different version of Damian Daniels, but this is how he plays in November. Like every game's his last game. Well, that sense of urgency really notches up the adrenaline and you just feel, you know, they the players know what's going on. Ooh. Jumper misses for Riley Patton, the rebound for Madden. Daniels on the curl, crosses over, leans in, throws up a shot, no good. He's trying to carry the team. He's going to need some help, and that's a charge. Mm. Good defense there. I thought that was a good call. Yeah, the double team came, and Taryn Armstrong gets whistled for his third personal. Great defense there by Madden on the sideline, right in front of Rick Roy, the head coach for CBU. So we said earlier, what does ACU need to do is every possession, they need to get a quality shot. And they, you know, here's an opportunity off their defense to get a good shot and hopefully score for them. Allen had a bad angle at it, but he's bailed out by Nottage. Third are Nottage, foul issues all over the place. Four are Chiquenio, three are Nottage, three are Taryn Armstrong. Meanwhile, for Abilene Christian, four are Simmons. Three aren't Betty All, three aren't Allen, and three aren't Cameron. Emmanuel Allen, a redshirt senior out of Phoenix, did not play in the first matchup this year against CBU. That was a game in which Abilene Christian won by 16 on the road. And that script has been flipped here today in WAC Vegas. Second one rims away, Nottage picks it up. Double team comes, Cameron was reaching in, almost forced to jump ball. Taryn Armstrong almost got called for 10 seconds there. I think it was a half second to spare. And Taryn Armstrong just picked up his fourth. He has to be careful. He hands the ball back to Kelly Fife for the official. Oh, he almost got teed up, Joe. And if he got teed up, he would have been out of this ball game. So we'll see on this player's down at the other end. Oh, he hit his head. He hit his head. 
they're going to have to do a concussion protocol. Mm. You know, the certified athletic trainer is asking him to come off, which he's going to have yeah. to do, and they're going to take him most likely in the back, and, and they have a protocol they go through to make sure he is okay before he's allowed to come back in the game. Tobias Cameron, a grad student from Australia, his sixth year in the Abilene Christian program, and he was telling Brett Tanner, I'm good. He wanted to stay in the game. <laughs> he definitely wanted to stay, but you gotta do the right thing for these guys. There is a different level of toughness with Damian Daniels and Tobias Cameron. They wanna win at all costs here. Back door for Madden. Shot is blocked by Trey Armstrong, but a foul is called. And it's on Trey Armstrong. Madden will shoot two, and this one is starting to get a little more interesting with under six remaining. Well, this is basketball game of runs, and you can see here, good back door and definitely a swing. And, and right now, the momentum is shifting toward Abilene Christian. Both teams now in the double bonus the rest of the way. Shooting has been a big time struggle for Brett Tanner's squad today. 38% for the field. They are now six for nine on free throws, one for 14 from distance. It is very hard to win a neutral side game when you're one for 14 from three. And I'm a little surprised that Taryn Armstrong staying in the game right now because he does have four fouls. Have actually, there's two players. And the player that normally replaces him also has four yep. fouls. Popping out is Trey Armstrong. Missed that three short. It's been a quiet half for him after a monstrous first half. Simmons pushes for Madden. Blows by Trey Armstrong. Blocked by Nottage, who came out of nowhere. Wow, that was a great block, and he did come out of nowhere. Deba defends Taryn Armstrong. Hand off Chilquenio. Runs over Daniels, and that's a charge on Blondo Chiquenio. That is his fifth, and he is done with five minutes remaining. So we're getting short on the point guards here for CBU. You know, I've seen a lot of offensive fouls here today. Wow. Let's take a look here. This is at the other end, the great block there by Nottage. Well, okay, hmm. I, I might be up on that one on that call, but you know what, um, I'm not wearing striped shirt today. <laughs> it's a tough job, isn't it? It is, you know, we're, we are fortunate to see the replay where they're doing it live, but we've got a game here and it's a physical game. A lot of fouls called and it, you know, to me what it's gonna come down to down the stretch, it's gonna be about who makes free throws. With Choquenio done, Hunter Goodrick re-enters for California Baptist. The Lancers have lost three of their previous four. The Wildcats have lost five in a row after three straight wins. Madden underneath, layup is good, and he's been a big lift off the bench. He's been a big lift, and what they're trying to do, Evelyn Christian trying to do is go at the rim because they know guys are in foul trouble. In the last three possessions down, CBU has had three turnovers. Three for Trey Armstrong, he buries it. Oh my God, timely three, brother to brother on the assist, and there's another, another offensive charge. My goodness, the intensity has picked up here another notch. Trey Armstrong draws the charge to the three on one end, the charge on the other end. These two teams are putting their bodies on the line here in round one. You win, you advance, you survive to the quarterfinals, you lose, you go home. Fouls have been called, and I think the officials have done a really good job of controlling this game today, Joe. Well, you gotta control the game. I mean, these guys are putting everything on. It's a physical game. Nottage, Madden slips, and that's a charge. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen more charges called in a game than today. That's a 
That's the fourth our nottage. Uh, I don't know, but it is what it is, and that's called a charge. Both teams in the double bonus. Daniels running the point for Abilene Christian. Allen, good verticality by Goodrick. Allen scores anyway. And we got a seven point game going right at the rim. Pressure applied by Damian Daniels. The WAC all defensive team selection. Hopping is Taryn Armstrong, and he buries the triple. And that was a big shot. He hasn't scored much from the perimeter. Obviously, is a very good scorer, but timely three-pointer. <laughs> Charge on Daniels. <laughs> Add it to the tally, Joan. Wow. Wow. That was a good call. I like that call. It's a charge fest in WAC Vegas. <laughs> Lancers lead by 10. Very good job of that. And now Cameron able to return. And Abilene Christian needs to make a run here with 3.30 left and half two. Cameron might have poked it. Stolen by Pleasant. Cameron with the ball. Simmons for three. Yes! Big shot there by Simmons. Arion Simmons. This guy played in the NCAA tournament, so he understands of the pressure of being in the WAC tournament. Nice pass. Taryn Armstrong down low. Nice pass and way to run of the rim, Taryn Armstrong. Let's see what kind of an impact Cameron can have on the game. Cameron with it, sends it out for Madden. In the corner to Daniels. Operates on the baseline, sends it out to Simmons. Madden straight on, missed it short, follows the miss. Floater good for Hunter Jack Madden. Yeah, really great to follow your shot. No box out there by CBU. Damian Daniels is all over him. A lot of minutes once again for Taryn Armstrong. He had bat and back door, but he chose not to throw it. Now he'll lob it for him, stolen by Pleasant. Saves it for Daniels. Good defense there by the Wildcats. Cameron back to Daniels, defended by Taryn Armstrong. Under two minutes left. Daniels mid-range, he got it. And it's a two possession game, quick timeout. Brett Tanner, the pesky cats aren't going anywhere. I like that timeout by Coach. This year and also a spot in the quarterfinals. Armstrong to Armstrong, now in the front court for Nottage. Both teams in the double bonus. Two timeouts left for ACU, one timeout left for CBU, and Allen fouls Taryn Armstrong, yeah. a 69% free throw shooter. That was a good call. I mean, you have to call that right in front of the official. And now there's two free throws, although Taryn hasn't been really good today at the free throw line, which is a little surprising. We'll see if he can knock these down. The Lancers have not shot free throws well as a team either. 11 for 19 before this throw for Taryn Armstrong. He's way short. So I always say, if you miss the first one, don't miss in the same spot. And when he's missed today, he's generally been short. Joan, he is one for six. I know. You gotta come up on the balls of your feet and hold your finish, and there he does. So it is still a two possession game of three. Could bring the Wildcats within three. Simmons fires, way off. Offensive rebound, Madden. Daniels passed it up. Bumped by Taryn Armstrong, no call. Cameron going to work. Slithers, layup no good. Batten snares it in. Cameron wraps him up. That's his fourth. And Batten will shoot two free throws for CBU. You know, I said this is going to come down to free throws, particularly for California Baptist. So it's important they knock down these free throws and play smart down the stretch. Riley Batten, a really good shooter, not a great free throw shooter though. 65% his first try here today. 
Look good on that one. Grad transfer from Westlake Village, California. A high school four star. Grew up about 80 miles away from Riverside. He's back home for his final year collegiately at CBU. And he makes both. Those were some timely free throws there. I like his game. Clock won't start until Daniels touches it. He does at midcourt. Madden finds a crease, bounces off the defender and lays it in for two. Timeout, Brett Tanner. Hunter Jack Madden in double figures with 11. You know, so this gives, uh, this basket gives time also for Abilene Christian. That was a nice shot to set their defense up. Lancers by six. Dangerous pass, almost stolen, grabbed by Nottage. Trey Armstrong into the front court. Bodies down to the hardwood again. It's Cameron again at midcourt. Daniels was also down. He's had a tough day, the poor guy. And, and this was the same pass that got tipped and stolen here earlier. And tell Taryn Armstrong's fortunate they didn't get that turnover. Poor guy. It was a mid-court collision mm -hmm. on a very dangerous pass. Probably should have been stolen by ACU. There is some blood there, so mm. he's going to have to come out. Yeah, I don't know what hit him in the face, but he got hit in the face pretty good. In case you're just joining us, Cameron hit his head on the hardwood earlier in the half, had to leave the game, go through concussion protocol. He was able to re-enter. He was cleared then. And now he collides at midcourt. He has to go off again and get tended to once again. So now the Lancers can inbound in the front court, and Trey Armstrong will trigger in again. Gets it in for his younger brother, Taryn. A minute so left. They're going to try to use clock here and force them to, whoop, loses it. Oh. Dangerous pass again, and Taryn Armstrong threw it away again. Madden to Allen. Allen blows by the defender and lays it in for two. A lot of uncharacteristic turnovers here by Taryn Armstrong. Throws it low, but Nottage able to catch down by his ankles. Wildcats wanted a jump ball. Foul is called on Madden. Yeah, Taryn Armstrong, too nonchalant with the ball down the stretch, Joe. I'm a little surprised, you know. He has six turnovers today, and uh, he's a great passer and great player. But you got to credit, so you credit Abilene Christian for their defensive intensity and anticipation. Trey Armstrong with a game-high 20, three for five on free throws. A better percentage from the three-point line. Five for six from there. Six-foot-six junior guard from Tasmania as Brett Tanner, the ACU head coach, looks on. Gets one out of two. 30 seconds remaining. Daniels quickly into the front court. Allen will launch, short on the three. Daniels pushes it for Simmons. An air ball saved by Pleasant. Allen is stripped in the corner, and a foul is called on Emmanuel Allen, and that will send Trey Armstrong to the free throw line for two with 16 seconds left. You know, I, right now the Lancers are fortunate because so many opportunities here, and that's a really good slap and there definitely was a foul there but the Lancers are fortunate because they're giving up the long rebounds and second opportunities to the Wildcats showing the nightmare number for Abilene Christian two for 19 from three it's really hard to win in the postseason when you miss 17 of your 19 three-point tries it is it's just not their night from the three-point line and 16 seconds left, and now a definitely two-possession game, six-point game. We'll see if this free throw can make it a three-possession game. It's and been it a does. roller coaster finish, shooting free throws for CBU down the stretch, but Trey Armstrong makes both, and Rick Croy will use a timeout. So I think right now Rick Croy's talking to his guys. 
It's our first of four today here at Michelob Ultra Arena. Daniels zips into the front court. Using a lot of clock here. This is Jackson for three. Shallow cleared by Taryn Armstrong. Wildcats will reach in and force a jump ball and they will keep it with two seconds left. And now we take a look at our Hercules tires. Strong move of the game. Hercules tires ride on our strength. And it will come from Arion Simmons. This was a three-pointer that Abilene Christian really needed to get back in the game, but the comeback for Abilene Christian will fall just short. And Abilene Christian season ends. California Baptist advances 